All right, welcome back to Fabani Solutions. Today we're gonna to be discussing uh, skill practices on vena puncture draws on a plastic arm. This is going to uh, kind of give you proper technique. Now, I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube that uh, don't even get into this type of instruction. They simply show you no review. In a lot of cases, uh, they go through these procedures uh, very quickly and they make a lot of mistakes. So I'm gonna break down uh, first the tourniquet and then we're going to get into needle assembly we're going to get into uh, the equipment you're going to be using the importance of the uh, of the of the tourniquet and the needle and the tubes and the order of veins and all those things but I want to first focus on the tourniquet now this is important because this is going to allow you uh, to understand why it's important that we tie the tourniquet uh, a certain spot in the arm uh, how long we leave it on for you know how to release your tourniquet and things like that uh, most people don't realize the importance of the tourniquet and not leaving it on longer than a specific time now a lot of these terms you're going to hear from me regarding hemoconcentration uh, the percentage of the one minute time the order of veins uh, the antecubital fossa with the median cubital cephalic and basilic veins if you're not familiar with these terms then you need to go back and re-watch my lecture videos because everything leads up to this point all my video lectures lead up to this moment here so if you haven't gone through the lecture videos yet please go back and watch the videos carefully all right now first thing we need to understand with the tourniquet I always wear gloves. Now, when dealing with patients, I don't like to make skin to, skin, skin to skin contact with patients because again, we don't know what the patient could have. We don't know what could be transmitted to you. And again, I don't wanna carry this stuff back home to my family. So I know a lot of phlebotomists like to have no gloves on and handle the patient's arm and do all kinds of stuff. But again, we don't know what the patient has. He's in here taking blood tests, he's in the hospital. I don't want to take chances and I'm not about to uh, transfer anything to myself and then take it home to my family. So again, I always wear a glove before I make contact with the patient. But again, it's an option. Now again, tying the tourniquet, this is important. There are different ways of tying a tourniquet. The first thing to understand is that we always tie the tourniquet three to four inches above the site. So the antecubital fossa here, this area where all three veins are located, it's called the antecubital fossa we go three to four inches above the site, which is typically the middle or the midpoint of the bicep. We don't want to go too low, like an inch or two inches above the site, because the pressure on the tourniquet could cause the vein to collapse and cause a hematoma. It's just too much for this area when it comes to pressure. And so we want to go three to four inches, not too high, not four to five inches towards the top of the bicep, because again, this might not be as effective to uh, restrict blood flow so you might not be able to get proper uh, tube fillings so you want to stay midpoint three to four inches is what is what the CLSI standard is now everybody ties a tourniquet differently I prefer tying it this way than I'm about to show you but again there's no protocol for this you can tie it pretty much any way you want so again if you're right-handed I usually put a smaller piece on my right side and the longer piece on my left side. If you're left-handed, then you'd put the reverse. You'd put the smaller piece here and the longer piece over here on the right side. But again, I am right-handed. What you're going to do is with your left hand, you're gonna take two fingers and your thumb and grip the tourniquet, leaving at least a few inches of the end piece uh, visible. I'm gonna pinch it. I'm gonna put my two fingers resting on the bicep right here in the midpoint, three to four inches above the site. My right hand grabs underneath and I'm going to get tension here, two fingers and a thumb. I'm going to pull up with my right hand on the longer piece, over, pinch it with my thumb, keeping my fingers attached to the bicep. I should have good tension right here. If I don't, then that means I'm doing it wrong. Once I lift up, I'm going to tuck the back end in and have a nice three to four inches above the site with a nice little release lever right here. I put the long piece here because this tells me this is the this is the piece I'm going to pull to release my tourniquet, not the small piece. So I have the long piece here and it's ready to go. Again, I go three to four inches above the site. The tourniquet is not to be left on longer than one minute. Again, if the tourniquet is on longer than one minute, 
then hemoconcentration starts to set in. If you don't know that term, you can look it up in the textbook or go back and watch my videos on this because I get into hemoconcentration. Hemoconcentration can affect the results of any lab test. Anything over one minute, the percentage of hemoconcentration affecting the test goes up first three to five, se uh, three to five percent, five to ten percent, fifteen, twenty percent, and so forth. Every second, you typically five to ten seconds longer after the one minute, the percentage goes up that hemoconcentration is setting into the blood test and it could affect the results. So again, we want to go three to four inches above the site, no longer than one minute. And again, then I'm going to start with the palpating, which I'll show next. But again, this is the tourniquet procedure. Once I'm ready and I'm done with everything, I'm going to show you release mechanism. I don't like to pull back on the tourniquet. If I have a needle in the arm and I pull back, the skin could actually push back. And I've seen this happen with my students many times where they pull the tourniquet back and the skin and the needle come out. The needle comes out because the skin pulls back and then it falls right back on the needle and it could cause some irritation or pain on the patient and could stop blood flow if the needle comes out. So again, what I like to do is I like to either pull straight up or towards me just like this and release the tourniquet. Then again, I can end with my needle draw. So let's start this again. Three to four inches above the site if I'm right-handed, shorter piece on my right side, long piece over here. What I'm gonna do is two fingers and a thumb right here on this side, right hand goes underneath, I'm going to pull out. I don't like to pull up this way towards the patient because I can roll the skin on the arm and also pinch some hairs. So I like to pull out in a way to get away from that. And then once I get good tension, I pull it over, clip it with my thumb, lift up, tuck, and there I go. That saves the patient. This is not rolling on the skin. It's not pulling hair. So the patient is more comfortable and it's not too tight. I'm not looking to restrict blood flow, like completely. I want to restrict it to the point where I can still uh, get the vein to stay steady and get enough blood flow. If I put the tourniquet on too tight or, or too high uh, and it's way too tight in the patient, then again, I might not get no blood flow. So three to four inches by the site to prevent hemoconcentration and to prevent a hematoma. I'm sorry, three to four inches by the site. So I will prevent a hemotoma from happening or collapsing the vein no longer than one minute so that hemoconcentration will not take effect. And again, not too high above where I might not get enough blood flow. Okay, so this is what you wanna do when I'm done. Retract, pull towards you, and you're all set. So that's the tourniquet. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed it and you got enough out of it. Again, there's no right or wrong way for the tourniquet. I just do not prefer doing this where people just like a tie it like in a knot, you know, and then cause pain on the patient this way. It is not the best method to go because then it's harder to release or certain ways. There is a proper technique to tying a tourniquet. So hopefully you can uh, get this down. It's not that difficult. Uh, and again, uh, this is tourniquet procedure.